Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone calling in from all around the world. My name is Sandy Hart, and I am the director of the Women and Girls Sector of the Charter for Compassion International. And it's my supreme delight once again to invite you to this um, every 20-day call, urgent call from the spirit of the feminine with Grandmother Florida Mayo. If this is your first call with us, we have been convening each 20 days to honor and anchor us on the day of Ish, a day of particular feminine rising according to the teachings of the mind calendar. And all of us, all of our calls are uh, recorded and you can find them on the Women and Girls page of the Charter for Compassion's website. If you're uh, registered for this call, you will receive um, all of the uh, websites and resources that may be mentioned today, including that, as well as grandmother's website, followthegoldenpath.com. Uh, I just want to remind you before we start into our conversation um, that um, all, we, Grandmother Florida Maya loves your questions and welcomes them on the bottom of your computer screen. You will find a chat box or a Q&A box. They both do the same thing. And that's where you can enter in your questions or comments and we'll do our very best to get to all of them. Right now, it's my supreme delight to invite in our very special call. Um, we're welcoming Grandmother Suzanne Lewis. Uh, Grandmother Suzanne is known as a circle woman, a planetary peacekeeper in association with the venerable Diana Wahoo, uh, who is a 27th generational Cherokee medicine woman and Tibetan ordained holy woman. Grandmother Suzanne is also a community spiritual leader and healer and advocate of, of the International 13 Indigenous Grandmothers, guide agent of conscious evolution with Dr. Mark, Barbara Marks Hubbard and the Shift Network, also a dear friend of the Charter for Compassion. She's a pioneer of holistic and holistic therapist, educator, and hands-on healer, the author of many books, of which you can find at Holistic Body mind.com. Again, you'll get that, that, that um, website sent to you. Um, this certainly can't possibly do full justice to Grandmother Lewis, and I'm so excited um, for you to find out for yourself um, what a special call this will be. Before we step into this conversation with, with our grandmothers, um, Grandmother Florida Mayo, would you please open our circle? Thank you, Sandy. Thank you so very much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, uh, dear Grandmother Suzanne. Much blessings to everybody. I'd like to thank our beloved Creator, beloved Mother, Father, Creator, Maker of all, the beauty that is around us, beloved Mother, the Spirit of the Sun, the Spirit of the Earth, the Spirit of the Air, Spirit of the Water, beloved Creator. Thank you for allowing us to be these humans that are constantly in communion with all of the beauty of nature, with all of the beauty that is around us. Grandfather, grandmothers, heart of the heavens, heart of the earth. We are one and one we are, beloved creator. Thank you for constantly reminding us of who we are. Much blessings to all of the sacred elements. Much blessings to each and every one of you out there in the four directions. I am, I am so honored and, and, and with great gratitude, I want to introduce to everyone uh, Grandmother Suzanne Lewis, who uh, is a beautiful, beautiful grandmother um, that uh, I've uh, met uh, in, in Boise, Idaho, uh, many, many years ago. And it is, has been such a great honor to know her and to be in communication with Grandmother um, Suzanne, and at this moment, I'm going to invite Grandma Suzanne to come in and say hello. Uh, and uh, and I'd like to ask you, Grandma Suzanne, if you can uh, uh, speak from your heart and tell uh, tell the audience on on how we met and the journey that we have been uh, in together as grandmothers. It's such a great honor for me to greet you, uh, Grandmother Sister Suzanne. Thank you so much. Grandmother Suzanne, there you are. Thank you, Grandmother Florida Mayo. Hi, 
I'm so honored to be on this phone call with you. Uh, it takes me back to when I first started being on phone call communications when you and the 13 indigenous grandmothers were pioneers leading the way to uh, share the sacredness of ish, the high instinctual feminine nature. You women had a holy call and you came together and from all nations, you brought the, the sacred. And I'm going to move fast forward to 2012 when um, I was participating with you in the Golden Dawn uh, that you were uh, blessing. It was at New Year's. And at this uh, five part ceremonial uh, blessing of coming into the New Year and the Golden Child, you had us do a spiritual activity, uh, and I went out to uh, the local, uh, my backyard, the mountains, and I was praying, and I received a vision. And at this point in my life, I was still crushed after a near-death car accident that left me with a brain injury and a broken body. And so the vision I received was uh, the Eagle Hawk vision, which was a tool to dismantle post-traumatic stress disorder, brain injuries, depression, and rewire the, the, the body. So moving fast forward, around six months later in May, a grandmother came to Boise and she put a call out, just like you folks that are on the call right now, to come together as community. And this was my first time to literally meet Grandmother Florida Mile. And I was still so broken and filled with pain. Uh, I'm surprised I even got there, but I had to. I was res responding to the call. And when I got there, um, I came bearing three ears of Hopi food corn that I grew in connection with Grandfather Hopi Thomas Yanka. And when I found a moment to gift these to Grandmother Florida Mile, it was like that lightning bolt of prophecy registered. And unbeknownst to me, bringing the sacred blue corn was fitting into the provision of the sea temple. What I want to share with people is that never take for granted being given a vision or being asked to respond. You, you have to take that step. And so in that workshop with Grandmother Florida Mayo, I am a, a shaman, a spiritual healer, as is Grandmother. And she offered me a healing in this community setting because I was really broken. And one of the things that why Grandmother and I are so connected at the star level, the light level, is that uh, we share universal wisdom from the stars that have seldom been heard in the English language. It's experiential. So moving fast forward to here we are, grandmother, on this call. Uh, that's my gift to you. You are a phenomena. And I'm so glad that we recognize each other. Thank you, Grandmother Suzanne. I have um, uh, in my heart the memory of everything that you said, and it's so vivid in my mind. And I just wanted to say to everybody that we are so connected as humans. And it isn't until the moment that we put this into recognition that, regardless of um, 
whether we all meet physically or we meet in this new technology watching each other from a screen or we meet in prayer or we meet in the daytime there is always the interaction of this beautiful phenomena of light and the dialogue and the communication that we have um, between between everything that exists everything that is part of the sacred uh, mystery and so even if before we meet uh, we have this place where we feel in our heart that we're going to meet somebody. We, we start this um, movement of light and interaction between, between us. And so when we finally get to have that, that communication, then we are um, we're in communion with each other. And that's the beauty beauty of these conversations, these dialogues, is that we are in communion with each other through the heart, through the heart. And of course, we have our senses, the ears, the eyes, and our spoken word, whatever it is that the Holy Ones shower us with all this information to put forth for people because even if it's one person that we're talking to or even if it's just us talking to nature we are constantly having this this beautiful beautiful dialogue so grandma suzanne from the bottom of my heart uh i love you so much and we have been connected for quite some time it's been a beautiful beautiful journey between you and I and I the beautiful beautiful corn sits in the in the seed temple uh, that you have given us thank you so much you're welcome I'm actually for the first time since my accident growing the three sisters I'm got the blue corn growing I've got squash and I've got green beans in my own backyard and I restored my circle of stones and uh, my attitude is that outside nature reflects inside nature. And the more I am befriending all the green things and the winged ones and the earth and the dirt and the water and the rain and the wind, the, the greater beauty res results. And if my life is like a postage stamp if my sanctuary is is that beautiful statement it's magnified out to the world it's a postage stamp to the world and that's what i see you doing is uh helping us get our postage stamp of beauty starting right where we are and what is within our reach and then knowing that it is uh Gifting the universe. When I first met you, grandmother, I and you walked back into my craft room and into my rose garden. I uh, I, I tested you about the wisdom of the flowers uh, because after my injury, all I could do was sit with flowers, and it made me pursue uh, that we are flower soldiers. And in my Mayan background, I was told that this time was coming where the fiercest leaders and warriors were called the flower soldiers, and they are women. And that the Mother Earth is known as the rose, and all her diverse flowers represent different aspects of her personality. And by looking into the face of a flower one sees creator god and what i feel you are cultivating is that beauty sweet way of flowering and ish like a great mother 
it was filled with all these different essences, flowers. Thank you, Grandmother Suzanne. That's really, really beautiful. I want to share with you also that I have been tending to my garden um, yeah. this, uh, this, this summer. I uh, planted food for my birds. I have um, a circular garden of sunflowers, and I, I am also growing uh, beans. And these beans are very, very special. Uh, they are like a pinto bean, but their name is the Flor de Mayo bean, and they come out of Mexico. So as soon as I have some of these little seeds, I'm going to send out some Flor de Mayo uh, bean seeds to whoever wants them. And also what I have done is that I rebuilt uh, the nursery for uh, the frogs here at the temple the water temple and it's it's been like almost a three month project but finally we got it together two weeks ago when we had a seed conference here and all the volunteers and everybody we initiated the beautiful beautiful um basin the little tub for the water temple and i want to share with everybody that on on monday we had two pairs of the uh, protected Rio Grande toads jump into the little pond and mate, and then they lay their little eggs on Monday, and yesterday morning the babies hatched. And what? we have about a thousand baby that now I am taken care of in the nursery. Huh. And so I want to share with you that not only we take care of the plants, but we take care of our little animals. And yes. for me, to be able to know that these protected little frogs that are known as the Rio Grande toads are now being born, and so many of them, because, you know, here in the desert, we don't have the, the you know, that much water for these little babies to, to, be, to, to continue to grow for, for the future generations. So I'm very excited about that that we help the plant kingdom and also our, our animal kingdom. It's really, really beautiful to share that. Grandmother, I don't know if I told you, but right now I'm day two of five days with Venerable Tahani Yuahu in a seminar called We Are in Intensive, We Are the Ones We've Been Waiting For. And I have to share this insight Current uh, neuro light science. They matched the vibration of a salamander. Then they projected the vibration of the salamander on an, a brand new egg of a frog, kept that vibration of light on the frog and it was born a salamander. Part of what we're about right now is that thought field. You and your little frogs, you envisioned restoration, and that's what's happening. Yes. Yes. So the encouragement here is for us to, uh, you know, to think about all of things around us and somehow try to support and to you know, bring our awareness and the way that um, uh, we support is either by supporting those that are doing the work or um, you know, coming out and volunteering for those that are doing the work um, and also just being present uh, with the prayers. So it's, uh, it, it's all very beautiful and good, yeah. And of course, we have a lot of uh, baby birds that are being born right now here in the desert and uh, the sunflowers are beginning to bloom and, 
and everything is just uh, so beautiful. We're, we're getting into the monsoon right now. So in the afternoon, we're getting a little bit of showers. And also, uh, we could see all of the changes uh, in the horizon with the, with the storms and the rain coming and the beautiful uh, see of the um, of the um, of the lightning dancing in the sky and it's just absolutely precious and beautiful uh, out here in the desert. Yeah. With my with my studies of the Great Wheel of Life, South is the summertime, and it's the home of the healer in my archetypes and. Um, the healer is one who is uh, uh, sentient, uh, uh, one who is, uh, has hyper-kinesthetic uh, abilities. And the healer represents family, love, and communication. And so that we're fully in this beautiful summer season, it is the prime opportunity to um, reflect what part of our inner garden, because our, our body is the earth, uh, our physical body is earth, but earth body, and what part of our body is flourishing and, and um, with the call of the ish and the sacred feminine, South is the home of the healer, which is the sacred feminine. It's instinctual. And um, to also consider, even if we don't have a literal garden, where, where, how, how is our terrain uh, growing? And where are the weeds? And where is there a lack of water? And where do we uh, need to stop and... Uh, uh, soothe ourselves by plugging into the earth. This is uh, absolutely correct. Uh, um, we could do um, a short uh, visualization, a short uh, meditation on us both men women and children uh in our hands you know creating creating a world of of protection for for mother nature uh right. so that uh we can continue to to hold the spirit of nature and when when we're thinking about it wherever we are we can just bring our hands together and and, and allow um, the, the beauty of, of nature to, to, to be in, in our hands and we can speak to it and send the prayers so that the grandmothers of the four directions can continue to, to take care of the earth. So what we're going to visualize right now is that we're going to see with... Um, with our spirit eye, an accumulation of earth coming into our hands, just kind of appearing in the way that the great mystery allows things to come. It will appear in your hands. And in the heart of your hands, you can envision a little stream of water with the spirit of the sacred waters coming in. And between the water and the little earth that has appeared in our hands, we can envision the spirit of the water blessing the earth, all that is on the earth, every grain of sand, every rock that is there in our hands, in our little little place of where we are building this um, nest for nature. And we allow the spirit of the, of the water to bless the earth. And through this uh, blessing, we can, with our mouths, send the spirit of the wind. 
and bless the earth that we have in our hands, the water that we have in our hands. And through the sacred breath, we can see in our mind's eyes all of the little trees, all of the little plants, all of those plants that bring us food, all of those plants that brings brings all of the homes for all of the little birds and all little animals, the creatures on the earth. We continue to blow with the spirit of the sacred breath, the sacred wind, and we allow the flowers in our little garden to grow. All of the beautiful things that we eat, allowing it to grow. All of that that we need to be in balance and to be able to grow on the earth. And we ask our beloved mother and father, the heart of the heavens and the heart of the earth, to bring us the spirit of the sacred rains. And we allow ourselves to see the beautiful clouds coming in with the spirit of the wind, showering all of our little plants, all of this little kingdom that we have in our hands, allowing, allowing us to witness and to see the growth of nature in our hands and allowing us to see and to feel the spirit of the rain coming, nurturing and becoming one with all of the beauty of this beautiful, beautiful, sacred day of Ish. Beloved creator, thank you for allowing us to have this beautiful visualization. Thank you to each and every one of us. Thank you. Thank you. And so we hold the spirit as we put our hands together and we embrace it in our hearts so that we can walk with that spirit of all of the sacred um, elements in our hearts. And whenever we think of helping our beloved mother, heart of the heavens and the earth, that we, when we open our hands and we make them into a little nest, that we can bring this offering and this visualization and say, beloved heart of the earth, I'm holding you in the prayers of my hands. Beloved spirit of the sacred heavens, heart of the heavens, I'm holding you here in my arms and in my heart. And I pray for you every moment of my breath for restoration and for that constant, constant communion between the heavens and the earth, all of nature, including all of us human, men and women, elderly, middle age, young adults, teenagers, little children, and newborn babies, and on to the future generations. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was beautiful, Grandmother. In the, the peaceful practice, which is the tool, the vision uh, that dismantles post-traumatic stress disorder and accident and injury, South on the Great Wheel, the summertime, is the place of our physical body. And it is the place where we have triggers when we have been traumatized or um, gone through war or environmental toxicity. And one of the gifts of uh, active imagination, this gift grandmother just gave us of holding and gifting uh, healthy earth uh, flowering, is called a golden moment. It uh, triggers endorphins in our mind. And when we've had trauma or been injured, we get triggered by things we see, smell, touch, taste, or tone. So when 
we're triggered, um, sometimes uh, we lose the capacity to think. And one of the gifts uh, as a person who's recovering from post-traumatic stress disorder and a brain injury is to ask people to refrain from asking questions. People who start out with, how are you, are asking you to think. So in response, when we are traumatized, when we're injured, which there are lots and lots right out there right now, instead we want to ask, how does your garden grow? How does this handful of sweet earth feel to you? And using nature, earth mother language, heals the traumatized brain and intellect. So immediately we, when triggered, want to remember a golden moment. And so we stop the assault of what, the sound or the smell or whatever, and we imagine with all our imagination exactly what you just talked us through, grandmother. The brain starts secreting endorphins and counters the, uh, stops the stress from the uh, uh, adrenaline and uh, the nauseousness in the belly. It calms the heart. We regain our breath and we return to our natural state of uh, being enough. Not thinking. That's really beautiful. Um, Grandmother Suzanne, that's very, very beautiful. <clears throat> I'm wondering if at this moment, um, Grandmother, you might be interested in hearing what our brothers and sisters uh, across the four directions are thinking, and perhaps we can open it up for some sure. questions. Wonderful. Thank you, grandmothers. There, okay. uh, there is a message coming in. It's from Lorraine Moore. I hope I'm saying your name right. Many blessings to both of you. A sharing, I am full of gratitude for this call and your wisdom. The connection between the two of you is wonderful. I agree. It has given me guidance to accept the connections that have been made in my own life. The web is growing and we are here to help. So many synchronicities occurring to the spirit of the natural Lorraine. Mm, thank you, Lorraine. Um, That's really beautiful, thank you. Yes, um, if I may also um, interject here that, that um, the, the as we know, the common element of women gathering in a circle, of women gathering is in the form of circle. Um, we operate in circle by energy and by nature, and it's how, like you say, Grandmother Florida Mayo, we meet in communion. And Grandmother Suzanne, I'm wondering, um, as a as a circle woman, if you could speak a little bit to that, and also your work as a circle woman. Particular. And both of you, I'm sure, have much to share on the conversation of circle. It's very much what we do at the women and girls sector. It's very much what we do in any circle I happen to be involved with. We'll even completely rearrange a room to make sure we're not sitting theater style, to make sure we're sitting in circle even. So um, perhaps both of you can speak to that. Well, Western mind is linear. It's flat. U Universal mind is circular. And from the most ancient times, um, when a circle appears in nature, and whether we call it a, a four-leaf clover circle, or a circle of roses, or a circle of stones, that's uh, an imprint from uh, the great creator, uh, hologramic, uh, so to speak, of our wholeness. And for me, 
circle means that uh, we step out of outside social and cultural projections and we step into the wholeness of being one, that we're all one. And when we form a circle, uh, it's always important to recognize that the ancestors are present, uh, the elements are present, and that every part of nature is present and participating. And in a circle, in the late uh, 1990s, I was in um, uh, Plinky with Brook Medicine Eagle, and we were doing sacred ceremony, with, and uh, I got chosen to climb the pyramid to seek a call for a vision. And the vision I saw was that of a circle of women. And I couldn't believe it. I have a gourd I could pull it down and show you. But it was women of every color and uh, nationality. And they were dressed and they were dancing and they were circling. And I was told that we will step into this new beginning, this uh, where we are right now, by means of women uh, circling in leadership with song, with voice, with celebration. And it's culture, cross-cultural diverse, black, brown, yellow, red, white uh, circling. And that will be the prophetic sign that, uh, what, they, what do they call that, the eagle and the condor, that the wisdom from the far south will finally come up to the north eagle and that um, it's through women and through circles that we're going to ascend to our, our dream state of uh, respect and kindness and universal wholeness. What about you, grandmother? <laughs> what do you say? Um, I wanna, I wanna say that, um, and we, we we spin a circle. Um, the the energy uh, moves about in a circular form, and uh, so when we sit in a circle from the beginning of time, in you know within our sacred teachings, at, as you know, way back. Um, we we speak about um, the first time that humanity was able to bring the spirit of the sun, uh, which is the living fire, into the center. And then uh, they thought, uh, here we have the, the living, breathing fire of the sun sitting here with us. And so when humanity gathered they're in a sacred circle emanating uh, the sacredness in the way that the, the spirit of the, of the wind uh, moves. And so, um, and also energetically, you know, we, we move like this. So we are um, um, mimicking uh, in, in this way. And when we sit together, we are all one, we compose a oneness. And when we sit together where our heads are of the same level, with our feet planted on the ground, in uh, the old days, we used to just squat on the floor, not having chairs, of course. We sat and we squatted. And so we, um, at that moment, uh, we were in connection with the spirit of the earth moving about us as one without any separation of uh, anyone being higher than the other, but more in recognition that we are and there is no one that is superior than the other. So the sacredness of the circle is to remind us that we are connected, we are one, we are uh, one light at that moment. And when I say my prayers, I say, I talk about that we are a circle of light. And that's the meaning of it. In other words, we're all connected at one time. 
doing our dialogue, doing our prayer, doing our community um, interaction, uh, family interaction. And so there's the beauty there with, within that. And, and that's what I was thinking, Grandmother Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you for addressing that. It's really quite important to the work that we do uh, with the charter, which is so much about, uh, particularly women and girls, which is very much about empowering women or providing resources for women and girls, particularly to find their voice. And Grandmother uh, Suzanne, so that you can, by the way, be fully in that circle. So you can feel that you are an equal, like you say, and that what you have to share is valued. And we often, as women, we notice in, in our communities, um, self-edit ourselves for the sake of not, um, of not look, meeting other standards or not having anything new to share, what have you. But Grandmother Suzanne, you said something that just brought me to my knees and that is that never hesitate to share your vision. I don't even know if you, Matt, you, you were even talking about this, but you said it earlier on this call, never hesitate to share your vision. And to me, that's probably the most important thing. We are given a vision with the intention not to hold it in ourselves, but to express it because it's what the treasures we have to share in our community. And in circle, that's what you're speaking to. So thank you so much to, for that. For that wisdom. One of the things that, one of the things that's so interesting is that when I heard grandmother share in late December and January that she had a mandate uh, uh, when she was down uh, at South that said that she had to speak to the urgency of Ish, the sacred feminine. I, grandmother, you probably don't know this, but I also had a mandate. Uh, I literally thought I was going blind at the end of December. And I heard creators say, how many people get a vision? What have you done with your vision? And of course, it was referring back to the Eagle Hawk vision, dismantling post-traumatic stress disorder. So I made a commitment to make real um, uh, through audio video, the, the labyrinth tool of dismantling and helping people come to voice, come to sight, can, come to hearing, whatever their spiritual giftedness is. So when I heard you say, never fail to express your vision, what the time is requiring of us right now, as we as women historically have been told to keep our mouth shut and say nothing. And even at the uh, political level right now, women are helping each other to address how we are not given voice, we are talked on top of, we are not credited or believed. And one of the things as being a non-traditional authorized healer and shaman is that it goes against the patriarchal false way our nation has developed where unless we were endorsed by the supreme medicine man or the greatest chief we as women were not seen as medicine women or visionaries or oraculars or spiritual gifted scribes what we're doing on this phone call is giving the freedom to have the voice or the creativity to share vision, and be heard and respected. Bandwagon. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And we actually have another comment, but before I share, um, I just want you to know that we at the Charter believe that when women fully lean into that power that we are is innate in us and is required in re of us as our divine grace, uh, to, to, to bring, bring the divine masculine and the divine feminine into balance there, um, our, we can heal our world swiftly and yes. with resilience. <laughs> okay. 
Thank you. Wow. Um, we have a, a lovely comment from in, Indrani Hawkins. I'm so moved this morning by your beautiful sharing about the sacred flowers, and I understand now why I am being called to include the theme of flowers into the Eugene retreat. The beautiful image meditation of holding the earth in our hands has moved me to tears as I realize that my small action can create such healing. Florida Mayo, you and Grandmother Suzanne have such a touching spirit between you. Thank you both for opening our hearts this morning, and much love to you, and Ronnie. Yes, thank you. It is our healing powers that we have, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you, Indrani. Mm. Ah. So in our um, the remaining time together, um, I would just like to invite you to share anything that you would like our our communities to know about uh, your work, particularly that you're doing right now, um, um, perhaps the right way to ask you is how does your garden grow? Where are you, are you talking to me? growing in this moment? Are you talking to me? Either one of you and both of you. So in, in uh, January, uh, when I made the commitment to make real this literal tool to assist people dismantle post-traumatic stress disorder and brain injuries. I prayed. And one of the things that grandmother and I share is life is a living prayer. And so uh, moving to today, this auspicious day of new beginnings, I have a powerful tool. It doesn't matter if you can't speak, if you can't walk. Uh, what matters is if you can imagine. And it's an integration of the five elements, oriental medicine, with the indigenous people's medicine wheel. And it's, uh, it's brilliant. I, I am a channel that brought the information through and uh, Grandmother Florida Mile asked me to share this vision with her, and she immediately endorsed it. And it's a tool that can be used for all ages. And I uh, am extremely excited to be speaking to it because somehow the, the doors and windows need to open up to put this tool in children's hands and in elders' hands uh, because it works. That I can speak is I'm evidence of coming through the most horrendous near-death uh, experience. And when I was dying, I had a vision. I had a near-death experience where I was walking through uh, kind of like... Uh, a great hall with giant pillars and they looked like angels, giant stone angels. And at the end of this corridor, there, there was this circular luminous blue ring. And as I approached this ring, I could see it up on a hill what looked like the elder brother. And elder brother is the Christ consciousness in, in Native American language. It was a, a long, tall, long, dark-haired male. But when I looked closer, it wasn't a male. It was a female. It was a white buffalo calf woman. And I was confused because now it was a he and then it was a she. And I was told it's all about being it. And then in a nanosecond, I crashed back into my body and back into the car. And the message of ish is it's he, she, it. We all have the sacred feminine and it's instinctual and it's felt and it's recognized uh, through the vibration of sweet, warm, loving embrace. Your turn, Grandma. Thank you. Thank you so 
so very much. Um, absolutely. Um, you know, these are absolutely uh, words of wisdom. Thank you so very much. I, I want to share with everybody um, that uh, we should continue uh, to share our messages, everybody around the world. I hear so many different um, uh, feedback uh, that uh, we are getting. We're all working together here um, to help everybody. And, uh, you know, please uh, to stay in touch. Um, I am so uh, looking forward in a few days for myself being out in absolute nature and um, walking my talk and just being present and observing. I have uh, someone that is going to come and take care of the baby frogs. <laughs> and I have someone that's going to take care of the land. And I have someone that's going to take care of the temples. And so we take care of all of these things before we go on our journey. And I'm so happy in my heart uh, this morning because uh, I feel so content that I can step out of my grounds and, and I'll have other people coming in, the next generation coming in and taking care of all of these things that are so dear to all of us, um, you know, for the sake of Ish, because this is who we are. We're having a relationship with all the beauty of nature, each and every one of us, men, women, and all of us, uh, children, absolutely. I, um, I am so um, deeply grateful, um, Sandy, for all of the work that you have done from the Charter of Compassion in helping, uh, in helping me, uh, Flor de Mayo, and, and bringing the message out because when I received the mandate, I, I, I was sharing and I had no idea just how I would get the word out, but you made it possible, Sandy. You and your organization made it possible for the, for the, for these thinking, the prayers and the thoughts to move about in the four directions. And I meet people wherever I go and they're talking about ish and it's so sweet. And they are embracing that. Uh, that that they're having this communion and dialogue with the spirit of, of all the heavens and the earth. It's so, so incredibly sweet. So from the bottom of my heart, I thank you, uh, Sandy, and the Center for Compassion for Women and Girls. That is so incredibly beautiful. Thank you. Grandmother, thank you. And um, I can't begin to tell you that the honor, delight, and pleasure is mine and ours. And um, this speaks once again to you sharing with us that mandate and that vision, especially when you are not by nature, perhaps a self promoter. Um, how is it at this time and space? We make sure that these visions be heard without sounding like we're self promoters. We, it's a time for unprecedented unified action. And all we're doing is showing up for one another. We have the treasures we have to give are our massive platform, our outreach. There might be a certain number of people actually listening live, but this does go out to potentially 2 million people. And then our friends at the Shift Network, they've also um, hosted you and, and Grandmother Suzanne, and I'm sure there are so many other networks that are hearing this message because you are answering that call yourself as well. Um, and so um, the honor is really truly mine. I'm just going to pop back in. I haven't been um, gone. I have been sitting at your hem, <laughs> soaking up your energy. But now I just am here to thank all of our listeners too and watchers, viewers, uh, wherever you are and whenever you're watching and listening to this to um, encourage you to please – um, share with us perhaps your reflections or anything we can pass on to the grandmothers um, that you may not have had a chance to to um, to contribute here on this call. And I'm just seeing one more message. Maybe this 
can close us or close me. I'd like you to close us, but this, this is an anonymous attendee who says, thank you very much grandmothers for sharing your wisdom with us. And thank you Sandy for facilitating this, my pleasure. I am wondering if you can share with us where and which website where we can obtain more information about grandmother Suzanne's healing process. Many, many uh, blessings to all of you. And Grandmother Suzanne, is it correct if I say it's the holisticbodymind.com website? That's my website, WW. Holistic is W H O L I S T I C bodymind.com. And I do have a, my book uh, that tells my story of, of becoming a healer. It's called Teacher of Heart. And you can only get it through me. Uh, but And my next book is called Water Medicine Woman, Normalizing the Language of Spirit. Mm, wonderful. And you will also get a, a anonymous caller. You'll also get um, a, an email following this call with the recording of this call as well. It will also be up on our website, um, a recording of this call and uh, any bit of information that I have is uh, on, on um, websites and resources I, I will send you um, as well. So if you didn't write that down, if you're driving, if you're on the phone, uh, you can um, be sure you'll get it in an email. If you don't and you're um, listening to this after the, the pre this uh, live presentation, then you can contact me at sandy at charterforcompassion.org and I'll make sure you get it. Um, we, um, would you like to close our circle, Grandmother, or any final words from either one of you? Uh, yes, I want to um, remind everybody that we're going to convene, we're going to come together in the fall because I'm uh, leaving to go do some teachings and to be out in nature, and so we're going to come back together in the fall, uh, I'm I'm still um, uh, not quite sure exactly on the date, uh, but we will come back together on the fall. And and from the bottom of my heart, I thank everybody for the uh, beautiful beautiful connection, and uh, I thank the spirit of our ancestors for bringing us uh, together. Uh, I want to share with everybody that I have a new website that has been launched. Uh, this past week or last week, and the website is www.grandmotherflordemayo.com. And uh, you know, please uh, take a look at the new website. This is um, my 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 first website uh, since uh, 1999, <laughs> and so and so I'm very proud of this website. Thank you so very much. I love each and every one of you. Love to you, Grandma Suzanne. My love to you, Sandy. Have a beautiful, blessed, beautiful, beautiful summer. And, and we'll see everybody soon. Love you. Love you. Love you. Thank you. Grandmother Suzanne, what a wonderful way to depart until fall. Blessings, everyone. Have a beautiful day.